It's worth starting as we always do with consumer demand because consumer demand drives all rough diamond purchases. Some changing patterns in the first half of 2015 uh, relating to consumer demand. Firstly, of course, consumer demand still remains uh, good in general, and we would expect over the year to see mild positive growth in consumer demand for diamond jewelry over the year. However, there are some factors at play in the uh, retail markets which are relevant. Firstly, there's too much stock in the retail world at the moment. So that's too much diamond jewelry stock. That's been caused by a number of factors. Firstly, the Christmas season in the US at the end of 2014 was slightly slower than anticipated. And this obviously meant retailers bought a bit more stock than they would have liked looking back uh, in retrospect. Secondly, the GIA, a major grading facility, had some backlog issues in its processing of uh, polish that it was grading in the US, particularly in the first half of 2014. They resolved these largely in the second half of 2014, but as a result, a whole lot more polished came on the polished market in the second half than would have been normally the case. So we have this double effect of slightly more stock at the end of 2014 and a slower Christmas than anticipated. The 2015 outlook is probably slower than we would have anticipated, and again, that's led to less polished sales than one would have liked. So that's in general meant that there's been a buildup of polished stocks uh, in the retailers. And we know when we look at places like China in particular, where there's no question growth is slowing, although there is still growth, that there's too much stock at some of the publicly available uh, retailers. So the starting point is there's too much polished diamond jewelry stock in the system. That in general, as you would expect, would lead to less sales out of the midstream. So the rough that's been converted to polished by the midstream, uh, there's less sales of those. So that's led to a buildup of uh, polished stock and as a result, a rough stock in the midstream. That in turn has led to uh, a drop in polished prices over the first half of 2015. Um, which in turn is obviously not helpful for people holding stock. Then there are some other issues which are facing the midstream at the moment, and I think we need to be clear here, it's tough out there for the midstream. It's not been an easy year for the midstream, and it's uh, important that we just identify that. So the midstream has been affected firstly, as I say, by excess stock, secondly by polished prices falling, although we do see those beginning to stabilise, which is positive news. And there are a couple of other factors at play in the midstream that make for a difficult time. The first one is the way that the funding banks, so those are the banks that finance the midstream, make funding and credit available is changing. There is still credit available for good businesses, but the terms on which the credit's being made available is more difficult for the midstream businesses. In simple terms, they, banks used to fund up to 100% of every purchase of rough diamonds, and they've now restricted that to 70 or 80% uh, of the purchases, meaning diamantes need to put more of their own equity into their businesses. So that's obviously added to the complexity and the problems in the midstream uh, in the first half of 2015. And then independent of that, although to some extent as a knock-on from that, We've seen, unfortunately, some insolvencies in the midstream, in the secondary businesses in the midstream in India in the latter part of H1 of 2015. Three in particular of businesses that were established that are either secondary traders or cutters and polishers. Those businesses going insolvent have led to the remaining parts of the midstream becoming nervous about who they will do business with. Much of the business in the midstream is done on credit, and you would expect that if you were worried about the um, solvency of your counterparty, you'd rethink whether you were prepared to do business with them on credit. So there's a complex series of factors that have added up together to make life very difficult in the midstream in the first half of 2015. Very pleased to see that we've been able to announce uh, an agreement in principle with the Namibian government for a new sales agreement. These agreements generally take a long time to negotiate, but uh, we've shown over the years that we can work well in partnerships with our host government. And this latest deal in principle, which we've agreed, is very good for both parties. So we've announced a 10-year sales agreement, which is the longest sales agreement we've ever done with Namibia. We've committed to increased goods to be available in Namibia for local beneficiation. Uh, NDTC will continue to sort and value all of the production of the entire Namibian group. And we've agreed with government to the creation of an independent window of 15% of the production of the group on a run of mine basis from when the government is ready to start the window. So it's a deal that's actually good for both parties. We're very pleased with the long-term nature of the deal. Um, and government's pleased with the window. So uh, a good example actually of us working well with our producer governments to get to a solution that's best for all parties. 
We've been looking at the future of Kimberley Mines for a number of years because, as you know, in terms of our business plan, Kimberley Mines uh, runs out at the end of 2018. So some time ago, we started a project to look at what was the best for Kimberley Mines. Should we shut it at the end of 2018? Could we find a techno-economic solution to allow us to keep the mine open beyond that? Or was it, in fact, better for all concerned if we could sell the mine to a sustainable operator? We concluded after a lot of work that the best option for Kimberley and the Kimberley mine was to see if we could sell the mine as a going concern to a long-term, responsible, sustainable operator. We've started a process to do that. Uh, we've made that publicly available, and we are at the beginning of a process to look to find the best operator for Kimberley Mines. These are complex processes because it's important we find the right partner for Kimberley going forward. So it should take us some time, but we're confident that's the best solution for the mine, for the people on the mine, and for the town of Kimberley.